Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're fired up to beef up one of our coolest inventions. It's an ultra mini tank called the Badger. It is the world's smallest tank. We're gonna fire everything we got at it. Push the final task to an explosive ending. Fire in the hole! Holy smokes! Oh man. I'm Michael Howe, and this is Jeff, my identical twin brother. Together, we've been inventing, engineering, and wrecking things since the time we could walk. Today, our inventions are saving lives and breaking the mold. We put it all on the line to open a small fabrication research and development shop. I'm the engineer, and my brother Jeff handles the business. And our wives, who happen to be sisters, keep the shop running. Welcome to How and How Tech. Today we have a big surprise from Mike and Jeff. Hi. Hi. Come here. Tracy today brought us in a really nice surprise, the Guinness Book of World Records. Dude, that's badass. We had a vehicle in it. It's called the Badger. Smallest all-terrain armored vehicle. Built by Howe right. Technologies. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you get his world record record, 2010. It's the world's smallest tank. It's pretty cool. The Badger is really neat because it's like a tank. It is a tank, but it's just really miniature. It is only 32 inches wide. We want to be able to get into a house anywhere that there may be a door. SWAT teams and police units can use it to enter a building where they're trying to apprehend a suspect that's been barricaded inside. The Badger can be used like a battering ram to actually get inside the building. Once inside, it can go around corners, uh, upstairs, basically anywhere you want to go to track down the subject. At all times, the law enforcement officer is actually protected by some pretty heavy duty armor. So by taking the officer out of the line of fire, the Badger can save lives. We have built one Badger already that is currently being used by SWAT and law enforcement. I can't tell you exactly where it is. Um, it is top secret, but I can tell you it's doing very, very well. It's an amazing feeling to make your mark on the world of engineering like that. It's really what pushes us every day to keep engineering, keep innovating, and getting the job done. Well, we are in the guest book of world record, man. And I didn't have to eat 3,000 hot dogs in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really proud of Mike and Jeff. They put their heart and their soul into this company. This is something they've worked for for a long time, and they really deserve this. Congratulations, honey. Thanks, hon. The Guinness Book thing is great, um, but we're always pushing forward and to redesign and make things better. The book of the decade. That makes my day. Being in the Guinness Book started us thinking we should find a way to expand the market for the Badger. We came up with the idea of adding a lot more armor. So the Badger can sustain direct hits from the highest caliber in rifles, as well as bombs. That will make it a lot more effective for SWAT teams, and we can also sell it to bomb squads. I'm thinking we build one in-house completely with the new modifications to it, ballistically test it, and basically shoot one up for real life. The whole point of building this Badger is to run it through a battery of tests. One of them is ballistics, one of them is explosives. Um, so we're building a whole Badger from scratch basically to blow it up. The current Badger has armor that's basically designed to protect an occupant from small arms fire. We weren't gonna stop there with this newest build. We wanna design the armor package so it will stop small arms fire, it'll stop the largest on the streets fire, and also stop explosives, grenades, and still protect the occupant. Once we do a bunch more tests, we can probably expand the market. Yeah. When it comes to a research and development project like this, we're actually throwing in quite a bit of our own money. So we really have to step up and perform. So this shop's really gonna struggle to keep its head above water. The biggest modification we're gonna be doing to the new Badger is actually the steel itself. We're gonna be using a proprietary ballistic steel coupled with interior Kevlar lining that will actually catch any of the ballistics that come in. The Kevlar liner for the Badger is actually gonna be made to our specifications by another manufacturer. They're gonna send us these pieces and we're gonna put them to the inside of the Badger. Pound for pound, Kevlar is five times stronger than steel. It's woven, it's basically a plastic that's woven into a very, very tight mesh. It's layered one after another. So even when the most powerful rounds impact the lining, that web catches it. You know, do we, do we do it now or do we wait? I don't know if we actually have the time to do it now. I just looked at the scheduling and um, the scheduling basically looks like we are gonna ramp up for SR1 at the end of two weeks and start the process rolling. 
The SR1 is another vehicle that we build for a mining operation. We're expecting another order in a couple of weeks, and that's going to give us a small window to be able to actually build another Badger and bombproof it. So we have basically two weeks to get it done. To build a complete, but to build a complete Badger, get the guys motivated, and we have two weeks to do this. Punch it out. That's what we do. Just do you do know it's going to burn up the guys. You understand that, right? After we get the Badger done, and this would be a reward, we get the Badger done, then we do the survival trip. We have a survival trip. This is a special event that we've been trying to plan for a really long time. The entire crew is going. We are extremely excited about it. It's a three-day trip through very rocky, mountainous terrain, and that's actually a reward. Are you sure you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Everybody, meeting? Yeah, meeting. All right, guys, seriously, we are really psyched we made the uh, Guinness Book of Worlds record. You guys know with the Badger. Awesome, well done, good job. But we want to upstage that a little bit. Mike and I just talked. What we want to do now is build a new Badger. Build one that's more beefed up, that has better armor. We've got a little bit of time. The SR1 order's not in yet, so we have some time right now to do some R&D. There's a lot going on, but we're not gonna miss the survival trip this time. If we don't do it now, it'll be another year before we can even think about it. That's the new plan, let's do it. Rock and roll it. Good, blow it up. Let's do Good. it. Good job, guys. Hey, Chief. Jeffrey Howe. Hey, how's it going? Hey, just wondering uh, when you might be available to uh, view our new uh, Badger in the ballistics testing. I really want two different guys to come out and evaluate the tests we're doing on the Badger. One would be a local police chief uh, for the ballistics, and the other one would be a bomb squad member for the explosives. I arrange a demonstration, they're gonna come out and basically watch us blow up the Badger. The major upgrade we wanna do for Badger is basically the armor. So we just had some steel arrive, and the guys are unloading it. Once the steel's unloaded, we actually have to then take that steel and chop it up into the hundreds of pieces that's actually gonna make the Badger body. I designed Badger in the computer, and then I flatten it out into a 2D space. I then define what I want cut in a flat piece of steel. That goes to the cut computer. The cut computer then turns that into zeros and ones for the plasma cutter. The cutting torch then knows which lines to cut, and boom, you have your plates cut. Honey, I have to run to the post. Okay. Okay. Love you. Love you, bye. You first. This week is Mike and Jeff's birthday. We're gonna have a party for them, so Tammy and I are going to sneak out during lunch and get the guys some birthday gifts. We figured they'd like some supplies for the camping trip that's coming up. Uh, yeah. Do you have any survival type items? You can survive, get it? Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mike and Jeff are extremely hard to shop for. I think it might be, you know, the fact that they have to be reminded that they're twins. Mike and Jeff always get the same thing for their birthday, just in different colors. How about a panini press? All the gifts I bought for the camping trip were definitely like little gag gifts. I just thought they were really funny. Does this one look like a match as much as the little ones do? Yeah. And it could also fend off a bear. That's true. When Jeff gets home, if he doesn't bring this camp mare, his nose hairs are going to be out of control. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for your so help. much. You're, You're sure very, very helpful. Josh right now is using the plasma cutter to cut out the pieces for the badger. It's kind of like a puzzle. If you get one piece wrong, that puzzle's not going to come together. When I was cutting the steel on the table, I noticed they were warping because of the, the heat that we were putting to it. it it's going to make it difficult to put together if the, those pieces don't straighten back out. I don't really have much time to deal with that right now. I just got to get them cutting off the table. Because um, I'd like to get that whole underside done today. I put Jeremy in charge of some of the engineering for the Badger. It is a tough job, but I have a ton of faith in this kid. What Josh has printed off right here is the dimension drawing and this gives us all of the external dimensions that we need to build it. What he's already done is gone through and cut out the majority of all the pieces. So now it's up to Tyler and myself to put it all together. <sighs> Unfortunately, everything that I'm welding together weighs 100 pounds, so it's pretty hard to handle. And it likes to warp a lot when we weld it. As soon as it heats, it expands, and then it starts to melt and warp. So the design for the Badger requires perfect 90-degree welds on the bottom. The problem that we're having now is that the metal that we're clamping together is all warped, and it's almost impossible to clamp the two pieces together and have that hold at 90 degrees while we weld it. Idiot! Go back to doing whatever it was <laughs> that you thought you were doing. That's an issue. It more or less requires a complete restart. I think so. 
fix this, we'll have to rip the plates apart and find a way to re-weld them so they sit flush. Any waste of time hurts. We'll straighten up in the morning. Redo. Redo. This warped metal problem is going to set us back a lot. Rescue Randy is our in-house crash test dummy. He bothers me. He gives me this evil eye stare. Every now and then, I'll give him an open hand slap. I don't care. We have a live ballistics demonstration on the Badger. We have to finish the vehicle, and we already ran into a problem. The armored steel that we're using on the Badger uh, started to warp on the plasma table. This causes distortion in the entire structure. So right now, we have gaps that we need to fill. We need to solve this problem so we can move forward. Yeah, that's why we had issues. I put Jeremy in charge of some of the engineering for the Badger. He's had a little bit of an issue with the steel warping, but he's a smart kid. He'll figure it out. There you go. All right, I got to go to you. Right now, we're reassembling the bottom of the Badger. Um, when we welded it the first time, everything warped, and it caused the metal to go a half inch out of vertical. To solve this problem, uh, we're welding beams across the two pieces that will prevent it from warping and keep it at 90 degrees. Pretty perfect to me. So while Jeremy and Josh finish work on the hull, I'm going to prep our motor for the Badger. We use a 32 horse, three cylinder diesel. Normally we would use a new motor, but since we're gonna blow this vehicle up, we just bought a used one to save cost. From all appearances, the motor actually looks like it's in good shape, but when you buy something used, you, you never know what you're gonna get. Right now, the main chassis of the hull's uh, being built, and it looks like they've actually controlled the warpage of the cage. Let's go with it. We are gonna blow it up. We're going to shoot bullets as long as it's structural, as long oh, as... Absolutely, it'll be structural. Yeah. yeah. We can't waste a lot of time on this, so we got to roll with it. I'm psyched. We just got a very special package delivered. Rescue Randy! What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Rescue Randy is our in-house crash test dummy. He will be inside the Badger during these ballistics tests. This is our latest Rescue Randy. We go through a lot of these guys for any demolition or ballistics testing that we need a crash test dummy, we call him Rescue Randy. You know, a, a piece of shrapnel comes through the door at him, gets him in the head, I'll be happy about it. He bothers me. I don't know what it is. It's the look in his eye. He gives me this evil eye stare. Come on. <clears throat> Every now and then, I'll give him an open hand slap. I don't care. <clears throat> so I'm glad that he's going to be in the Badger. All right, we apologize now, buddy, but you're going to get blown up. Okay. Good for you, Randy. Don't look at me like that again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeremy's doing very well. I actually am impressed with Jeremy. He's a good engineer, um, very good fabricator, and uh, he's got a good attitude. So I have high hopes for him. I never once thought that I'd be building something like this. I've always dreamed of it. I guess dreams do come true. Nice. Nice. It's a good feeling to get when something that you're building could save somebody's life. So even though we fixed our warping issue, it cost us so much time. We should have the engine in by now, but we don't. I'm not really sure what we're going to do. Uh, I think I'm going to have to ask the guys to come in this weekend to, to make up for the extra time. All right, you guys ready to go meet with Will, find out what's up for this yeah, weekend? Yeah, let's go do that. As far as working tomorrow, I know nobody wants to, but who can? Jeremy, sorry. You're working tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get the Badger done as soon as possible. What about you, Mike? Sure. Can't give you right. Sunday, though. Okay. It sucks to ask the guys to come in on weekends, but we have to take advantage of the small window um, before the survival trip and before these big orders come in for the SR1. So we're going to suck it up, and we're going to get this done. The word is I'm gone. It's Friday, 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 Friday. It's going to be a long weekend. It's definitely going to be a long weekend. It's been a long week. It's now Saturday. Stuff we still have to do. So that being said, Will, you got lists for everybody? Goal today is to get tracks on the Badger. Once we get this done, we're out of here. I don't want to stay any later than I have to. I need to find out who my family is again. I think I remember what they look like. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ready? One, Hang two, on. three. Oh, look at that. Perfect.
Now that the lower chassis is almost done, we can actually start to incorporate the lower suspension and tracks. We're basically building the, the custom suspension for this vehicle so it can actually go up over a, a curb or stairs. So as you go up a stairway, this will rotate down and then it will rotate up and allowing the stairway, the actual stairs to become closer to the chassis. We're trying to get our suspension components in. It's kind of difficult because we don't have any engineering drawings of this. So we're pretty much going off the pictures from last time. I just don't want to waste time by not knowing what we're doing. You know what I mean? We'll be here all night. We are really busy. The strain that we're putting on the guys right now, it's starting to show. What the is this? The thing with Foisy is his attitude's been pretty poor. Foisy's in second command under me. I need him to be a leader, not a complainer. We gotta pick it up, Mike. We gotta clean up a little bit to be able to do this. All right, not just gonna stand around. Man, that pisses me off. I, I am annoyed because, you know, I get it in one ear, you know, we gotta go, 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 we got so much to do, but then, you know, just have to stop in the middle and start cleaning. No, it's like my eight-year-old when I ask her to do something. She stomps around. Unbelievable, man. Right now, we are so busy. I, I can't have a bad attitude in the shop. You know, it, it'll slow down production. He and I have kind of been going back and forth for a couple of days now. And it came to a head today. Um, I guess I almost hit him with a gantry. That's an excuse, I think. All right, you know, that's it. Run me over with the gantry. You out of here, Mike? Yeah. Mike? I was picking up. You tell me to get the gantry. Then you tell me to pick up. I don't know what's up your but. I didn't do anything to you. Everything I asked you to do, I get attitude about. I didn't I'm give you attitude. It. And you want the honest truth, Mike? I don't need you next month either. OK. All right? I'm not going to deal with that. So, you left? Ridiculous train is what it is. One of my guys wants to walk out, keep on walking. That's what I say. Let's shoot this thing. This is, is really judgment day for us. We are trying to simulate what kind of guns that the Badger can protect them against. Fire and hole, 50 cal going down range. Today's Sunday, and it is my birthday. And yes, that would make it Jeff's birthday too. This is our only day off before the final test of the Badger. Um, so it's really nice to be able to spend some quality time with the family. <laughs> Tammy and I always go out of our way to try to get them really cool stuff that they really like. Uh, what else do we have? Couple more gifts. Move on. And they're just like, meh, whatever. I think it might be their mom had them dressed the same for their birthdays. Here we go. This is what they look hey, like. Hey, matching shirts, your <laughs> favorites. Birthday's just another day that people get to call us twins and buy us the same clothing and ask ask us to wear them together and jump around like clowns, like we're twin clowns, and I'm I mean, tired of it. Stay in the steel no. mirror. What would that be for? I'm afraid that there. when you come back from your trip, if you don't tweeze the nose hairs on a daily basis, <laughs> then you'll be all tucked out when you come back. This here is uh, is useless to me. Do I have nose hairs? Dude, ha happy birthday, man. Happy birthday. Monday morning, Poise came to work like nothing had happened. On Saturday, I walked out. I was a little upset. I have a tendency to lose my temper. Have you talked to him at all today? <laughs> well, what do you want to do? Well, throw him out of here. Here's how I see it. He walked out, and now he's back and everything's fine. No issues. There was no reprimand for walking out. Will feels like Mike went unpunished this time. Foise served in the US Army over in Iraq. For us, that means a lot. And we have a ton of respect for him. It's really hard for me to take somebody like Foise and discipline him. That guy's done more for this country than any of us in the shop have. We had a talk. Honestly, the reason why he still has a job is because he's got a family to support. And that was the deciding factor. He's got a stay of execution on this one. Will's going to have to deal with it, too. And we're all going to have to get along. 
we have things to do, and infighting is not one of them. A huge challenge to us as a company has been basically delegating responsibility. Right now we have uh, Will, he's our programs manager, he's a great engineer, he's a great manager, and he does truly a tremendous job. But right now, we are so busy in the shop. There is no question we need another foreman like Will. The question is, who's gonna step up and take that spot? Our goal today is to finish the suspension and mount the engine. The badge is only 32 inches wide, so it can basically fit through a door. Our biggest challenge is making sure that we can get all those parts to fit within those dimensions. Very, very tough to get this to fit. The motor is hitting the side. Is it? Yeah, that's gonna stop us. Is this, you guys struggling with this, or? Just a bit. I personally think we should take these wheels off, those four. Let these bogey beams come together. Okay, we can do that. Right now, we're gonna try to separate our bogey beams so that we can allow the track to relax a little bit, make it easier to put in, and then we'll stretch the track back out. That's a, a tough system to do, that track setup. And they're getting it. They're getting it pretty quick, so I'm happy. There we go. Oh my God, good luck. See, it can be done. Now that's a sweet design, boys. Good job. <laughs> We've been watching Jeremy for a week now, and uh, he's really picked up his game. We can give him projects like we give Will, and I can trust him now to, that it's actually gonna get done right. In my opinion, he's ready to take on more responsibility. Jeff and I came to a decision that we need to pull Jeremy aside and have a talk with him. I just got called into a meeting with Mike, Jeff, and Will. Don't you like walking into a meeting and not know what's coming, Jeremy? It's always nerve wracking when you get called in, you know, because it's like, oh, what did I do wrong, you know? All right, this is the deal. We've had some issues with the hierarchy of this company lately. Jeff and I are going to give you the second foremanship leadership position under Will. You will be above Mike, and you'll be above Josh, and, and we'll give you a raise. I think a big part of this is you've shown leadership skills. All right. Um, yeah. You know, we've all noticed that. And you're, and you're also showing a real good drive. His work ethic has stepped up uh, top notch. He doesn't bitch, he doesn't moan, he, he busts his back in here, and it's time to reward good behavior. It makes me feel great. You know, it, it's nice to know that all the hard work pays off. Uh, boys, we're done, let's, let's shut down. We're out here. We've got the track system on, we've got the motor back in it, um, ready for hydraulics, so hopefully tomorrow evening we'll have it running and possibly driving. It's an adrenaline junkie thing. And that's what makes testing these vehicles exciting because you never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of like a box of chocolates. Our main goal today is to get the Badger running. Uh, the engine is in, but there's a lot of other stuff that we need to do to get this thing up and running. Jeremy is building the fuel tank. Tyler is fabricating the seat. William is actually doing the hydraulics and running all the electronics. We have less than a week to finish all this fabrication, assemble it all, and get it ready for testing. Our goal is to build and test the Badger in the small window that we have before the SR1 order comes in. And that order can come in any day now and we definitely have to get this done before the survival trip. It's gonna be long, a long few days here. Super long. On Monday, we basically got the engine in and the tracks onto the hull. When you're up against a deadline like this, you really need to be a team to, to make sure you can get stuff done. And on Tuesday, you can really tell that everybody kicked it in a high gear. Everybody's got their projects and, and they're all ripping into it. Um, Good to see. There you go. Everyone on the crew is really concentrating, working really hard, and doing a lot of work. That is absolutely beautiful. Brushed finish, whole nine yards. Too bad we're gonna blow it up. I know. <laughs> By the end of Wednesday, Jeremy completely fabricated, welded, and installed the fuel tank. And basically, Will had fitted all the hydraulics, which allows the vehicle to move. On Thursday, Will started to grapple with the wiring on the Badger. Yeah. It's a little complicated. This is the wiring. Um, hopefully everything will line up. 
The wiring for the Badger is basically its nerve center. So it controls the engine, the ignition, the throttle, the steering, the brakes, the hydraulics, and all the electronics. Will's adapting the wiring system from our old design, and it's turned out to be a real pain in the ass. At a certain point, it became clear this job is a little too difficult for one person. By Friday afternoon, it was time for us to all team up and get this wiring connected. This one here is a motion control. Where's this supposed to go? Remember those extra switches? Yeah. But there weren't any switches. They were just loose wires. That's this one here. It was kind of like a NASA think tank to get that wiring done. After that whole rigmarole, we were definitely concerned this thing wasn't even going to start. But by the end of it, we threw on the floor, threw the seat back, and we we're ready to test it. We just started the Badger for the first time. I like it. It's actually pretty smooth. Every vehicle we build, we build here from scratch. It's an adrenaline junkie thing to be the first to operate one of these vehicles. And that's what makes testing these vehicles exciting, because you never know what you're going to get. It's kind of like a box of chocolates. Tomorrow, what's our game plan, Will? Canopy. 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 We achieved our goal today by getting the Badger running. I'm certainly super happy about that. But we still have to do the canopy. We still have to do the Kevlar lining. So we're certainly not out of the woods yet. She's up and running, though. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much. We are in the last hour. We have to continue on the Badger. This is the big deal. We have got to get this right the first time. All right, let's go. Enough chit chat. By the end of the day, this thing's gonna look like a badger. Our goal today is to assemble the badger's canopy. The pieces are all cut out, and now we basically just have to assemble them. Oh, that's fun. Nice big one. Yep. Uh, look at that. Building the canopy is a lot of work, um, but at the same time, it's very rewarding. When it's done, you can step back and look at it and see why this is such a unique vehicle. The guys really came through today. They got the canopy welded. They got the tracks and suspension finished. They got the engine running. But we have a serious amount of stuff to do tomorrow. I think you guys did a great job considering that, once again, we're going to be blowing it up. It looks That's good. That's what I figured. Something wrong, Mike. We thought we were done. We have a huge problem. So those brakes, Mike, they're not releasing. Oh my god. This is the final day to finish the badger, and there's a ton of stuff to do. So, you know what? The guys in this shop are really going to kick some ass today. Now that the canopy's built, we can cut out the access door. Through a little trial and error, we found out that the best way to, to, to make the door on the Badger is to cut it out after it's all assembled and welded. The reason is, after you weld steel and it cools, it will tend to warp. So what you want to do is weld the whole vehicle together, let it cool, let it warp, then cut the door out, and that will ensure a perfect fit. There's the door. We're getting a lot done today, especially considering it's a Sunday. It's never easy for Mike and me to ask the guys to work on a weekend. My kids want me to go to the beach with them. I'm not going. At the end of the day, I think we all need to suck it up just a little bit. The Badger can save lives here, and if it means we have to forego a little family time, then that's what we need to do. I wish I could have gone with you guys. Jeff is an absolutely wonderful dad. He loves being with his boys. Yeah, love you. I know it kills him that right now the deadlines for the company and where the company's at, that's a sacrifice that he has to make. That's just the way it is right now. We're all very tired, but we're testing the badge in 14 hours. That's, that's the real deal. Uh, we probably have another 48 hours of, of stuff to do on it. We had some problems with Boise last week, but I'll tell you what, he's really stepped it up, and tonight he's working spot off. 
Cameron, find something to do. If you have nothing to do, clean. I can see you making eyes when I talk, by the way. And even though Cameron goofs off a lot, he's also here on Sunday, and he's also kicking some ass. There's no one more loyal than Cameron. So now that the door has been cut out and smooth, we are mounting the door on the hinges. Now we're painting the badge's body, and finally getting to install the Kevlar on the interior. This is the first and only time I'm going to be between your legs. Well, oh, that's not it. <laughs> the addition of the Kevlar to the inside of the Badger is the key improvement that's going to take the Badger to the next level. That's going to fit nice. <laughs> On Sunday night, after incredible effort from Cameron, Will, and Foise, we were able to take the Badger for a spin. Turn the lights off! It worked perfectly, and it felt really good to be done with time to spare before the demo. Yeah, it feels good. I don't mind it. No? I <laughs> kind of like it in here. All right, guys, good job um, today, I, I, this weekend, fantastic. I, I mean, good job is just so stupid to say after what we did. We have some ballistic testing to do. Hopefully, this thing's still in one piece when we get done with it. Um, Mike, good job isn't, isn't even enough. Good job. William. The house. The house! After a horribly long weekend, Will and I came in before the crack of dawn to basically get the Badger and put it on the trailer so we can get it up to the test facility. There's something wrong, right? And we thought we were done. And we have a huge problem. It almost feels like the brakes are locked. The brakes definitely seem locked, don't they? When we went to load the Badger on the trailer, the hydraulics ceased to function. It's those brakes, Mike. I don't know why, but they're not releasing. It's always something. Something's wrong with one of the rear pumps. To save costs, we, we bought a used engine. It's all because this thing's getting blown up, basically. My best guess right now, the Badger has hydraulically locked brakes. Once it's started, you actually have to tell the hydraulics to release the pressure or the vehicle won't go anywhere. We bought a used motor, and this is what we get. We'll shoot at it, we'll blow it up, we'll get the information we need from it, but it just sucks not to have running vehicles for the bomb squad. Oh my god. Today is the ballistics and explosive testing, so Will and I are going to go ahead and use the full wheel and get this thing loaded on the trailer to get it out to the site. Good job, boys! We don't want to market any of our vehicles before we know what they can do, before we know what they're capable of. It's just irresponsible, especially when you're dealing with vehicles that can save lives. Mike? Chief, Chief Sierra, you made Mike. Mike. Nice to meet you. We have the Chief of Police from the North Berwick Police Department here with us today. His job is basically to observe and give us any feedback he may have. Okay, okay, Randy, get in. We built a Badger with armor plating that will deflect pretty much any bullet out there. But we went one step further with the Kevlar liner. We took that technology and applied it to the Badger. If the ballistic steel backed by the Kevlar lining is able to stop these rounds we're throwing at it, it's gonna give us the data and the confidence we need to market the Badger across the country as well as worldwide. Let's shoot this thing. All right, All right let's try it. The first gun we're gonna shoot at the Badger is a nine millimeter Luger. We are trying to simulate what an officer is going to see in real life, what kind of guns that the Badger can protect them against. Really no damage whatsoever. We hit the Badger with it, and absolutely no damage at all. Very effective. The next test is the 500 Smith & Wesson, the largest handgun in production in the world. It has a wicked kick. That is a big round. Shot it at, bounced off, just fine. That is encouraging. Look at that. <sighs> That's impressive. The M16. I think the Badger is going to laugh at this. Nice! A 12 gauge. 
All you really have to worry about is the paint job. Yeah. We actually have a surprise for you today. We have a 50 caliber. Okay. The 50 cal is a military grade ammunition. It was developed to take out basically vehicles, airplanes. This is an armor piercing round, so okay. we will see what happens. It travels at nearly three times the speed of sound. For real, it is a monster. Fire in the hole, 50 cal going down range. Wow, now that is a round. We penetrated. The 50 cal took a gouge out of the Badger. I'm kind of nervous now. Everything looks OK. Oh, beautiful. The Kevlar caught it. Wow. That is wow. fantastic. Jeez, we stopped a 50. Good job. Some of the shrapnel came through the hull. All liner caught it. Randy didn't get hurt. I don't see anything other than boot marks. <laughs> so, Chief, what do you think? Would you put one of you guys in here? I wouldn't hesitate to. Fantastic news. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. We stopped every rifle round, so I couldn't be more happy. Um, nothing's bulletproof, but this is definitely bullet resistant. That's for damn sure. It's go time. The ballistics testing went really, really well. Now we have to test the Badger for a commander of the bomb squad. Fire in the hole! Go! Ballistics testing went really, really well. Now we have to test the Badger against explosives. So we're traveling about nine miles out of town to test the Badger for a commander of a bump squad in the mountains because what we're testing, the explosives, they can do serious damage. This is ballistically resilient here to uh, many different rounds. You can see we did some ballistics testing on it, live fire. Now we want to see how it fares against the uh, explosive. My name is Sergeant Andrew Parsons. I'm with the New Hampshire State Police Bomb Squad. I'm commander of the bomb squad there. Basically, what might be encountered for civilian law enforcement. I would say that this is going to be pretty accurate today, what we're going to be able to set off here. Right. This is, is really judgment day for us. We know now that the Badger does really well in the ballistics realm, but now we have to test it for explosives because if we're going to market this to bomb squads, we need to make sure it's going to hold up. If this fails, we've lost 50 grand. And it's back to the drawing board. This is where we keep the goodies. Darren Wakefield is our explosives engineer. I brought up some inch and a quarter, inch and a half by 16, and two by 16, so a little bit of everything. We decided to start slowly with one stick of dynamite. To measure what type of damage the shock wave would do to the operator or the vehicle, we've actually attached G-Shock stickers to the inside and the outside of the vehicle to basically give us an idea of the force involved during this explosion. When shock wave that comes in, it will actually break a thin piece of glass on the inside, releasing the dye, turning it red. So you now know that the body has received in excess of that G-Shock limit. We have four levels of G-Shock stickers. Each one of them is represented with a different color. 25, 50, 75, and 100 Gs. It's safe to say that if the 50 G and the 75 G, or even the 100 G-Shock sticker go red, there will be some sort of head trauma damage to the victim. It's go time. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh. That had a concussion. Wow. It is always fun when things are blowing up. And as we expected, everything is good on Randy. The results of the first explosion using dynamite were actually really incredible. The outside G-Shock stickers basically did show a little bit of elevated G-force but the inside stickers weren't even affected. Now, we're gonna amp things up. We're gonna take a fragment grenade, we're gonna duct tape it to the door of the Badger and see what happens. Three, two, one. Fire the hole! Look at that, right here, just right on the scene. I have a clear on the 50G, clear on the 100G. Unbelievable. We were very happy to see the grenade results. When it went off, it basically destroyed all of the stickers on the outside. Massive overpressure. But on the inside, very survivable, and the operator's going to be OK. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. And to see that, somebody could put a grenade on this thing and do nothing, absolutely nothing, was absolutely astonishing to me. We had a grenade less than 12 inches from this 25G shock sticker. 
a grenade, and we were able to reduce that. Are so, you ready to give it to her? Now it's time to test the breaking point of the Badger. Let's do it. Round two. We've stuffed a ton of explosives under it. We don't really know what's going to happen, but my fingers are crossed that the hull will hold together. Randy, I'm very sorry for this, but you do deserve it. Three, two, one. Fire in the hole! This one's for you, Randy. Oh. Door's open. Oh. She's still in one piece. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shnikes! Yeah! Boom! I just saw the track like flying, like rotating towards us, and I saw pieces of wheels coming at us just flying everywhere. No. <laughs> oh my word! The hull is still intact. Randy's still in one piece. The outside of the Badger sustained well over 100 Gs, basically because the stickers were gone. They blew it right off the vehicle. The inside of the vehicle, the 50 and the 100 G-Shock sticker did not turn red. The 25 G-Shock sticker did turn red. That tells us the shock load inside that vehicle was between 26 and 49 Gs. This explosion was survivable. There's no damage to Randy that I can see physically. Unbelievable. The Badger's going to uh, keep the occupant or the operator alive inside. Between the ballistics test to the explosion test, I couldn't be happier. We made a very durable vehicle and be able to offer them to uh, SWAT units and, and our men and women that, that fight for us, protect us. I'm pretty psyched. Let's get on the trailer. Let's get out of here. After a successful test, we were definitely excited to get on a survival trip. I know it might seem funny to some people, but for us, getting a chance to go into the woods, live in the outdoors, is a, is a real blessing. Jeff, do we have a cell phone just in case we get lost? Do we have one cell phone? No. No, no cell phone. Screw it. If we were to equate it, after all the work our, our guys put in for us, after all the work that we put in, this survival trip and going to do this is like, is like a, a stay at a five-star resort. I want to first of all say I'm super proud of everybody today. We, we actually are going to survive tonight, I think. Even though it rained over like an inch or two in this trip, you know what? It didn't really send us back as much, and I'm proud of everybody's attitude. Don't lose any part of that squirrel. It's all sustenance. That is. I'm doing the socks. Cameron, your socks.